The crucifixion of a Canadian soldier at Ypres was not the only atrocity the German army was alleged to have committed. From the beginning of the war, its soldiers had been accused of war crimes against civilians. In August 1914, fleeing Belgian refugees had told of the rape and murder of civilians. There were more lurid stories too. Some said that children had had their hands cut off. It was even rumoured that babies had been speared on German bayonets. Images like these became commonplace. Cartoons, posters and newspaper illustrations eagerly portrayed the depravity of the German army. Governments, military, do need to demonize the enemy. The propaganda machine needs to continually stoke up anger, stoke up aggression against the enemy. And they do this partly by making up stories, but more effective, in fact, is grey propaganda. In other words, taking something that is true, maybe did happen once, and make it into a, a normal practice. After the war, some extreme atrocity accounts were discredited. The West now dismissed all wartime atrocity stories, including the crucified soldier. But public opinion might have been less dismissive had it known the real evidence against the German army. Much of it comes from the first few weeks of the war. In 1914, the German plan to invade France had depended on speed for success. But the Belgian army put up a stout defence from a network of strategically placed forts. The Germans had suffered heavy casualties and had been delayed. They looked for a scapegoat. The Germans thought their losses could only be explained by civilian resistance. They believed that Belgian sharpshooters, or franc-tireurs, had waged guerrilla war against them. This was a myth, a myth that would have tragic consequences. These folk tales of the German army create an atmosphere of hair-trigger response to any perception of civilian resistance, whether true or false. So when uh, German army units open fire on each other, what we now think of as a friendly fire incident, both sides of uh, these incidents believe that they're being shot at by Belgian front tireurs and then go off and take it out on the civilian population. This fear of the Belgian civilian population was highlighted by the events of the 19th of August. On that day, the German 8th Brigade occupied the small town of Arscott. In 1914, Gust Boschmans was 12 years old. He is now 100. My two aunts and my cousins had left. I didn't want my grandfather to be alone. I was very fond of my grandfather. I was 12, but I decided to stay with him. Gust now experienced for himself how wary German soldiers were of Belgian civilians, even the very young or old. We heard shooting behind the house, very close to. We were curious and we went to see what had happened, but we didn't see anything. But suddenly, a German appeared in front of us with his revolver and said, You have been shooting? Because the Germans were terrified. One could see in his face that he was scared. But he could only see an old man with a grey beard and a boy of 12. He knew very well that it couldn't have been us. The Germans were on edge. 
When a sudden shot killed their colonel, they believed there had been an uprising. Women and children were locked up in the church. It was the prelude to a massacre outside. In Arscott, the Germans killed nearly 170 civilians. The victims included the mayor, his 15-year-old son, and even several women. The majority were accused of resistance. The soldiers systematically burned much of the town to the ground. Gust Boschmans witnessed the aftermath of the devastation. The maison. The houses on the right had burned down. On the side of the pavement, there was a corpse. And because the house had been burning, this corpse was all black and wrinkled. And I, a kid of 12, walked by on the pavement between the burnt house and the corpse. I was going to find snuff for my grandfather. The Germans needed to show their troops had acted in self-defense. In the midst of the war, military investigators traveled around occupied Belgium. Their job was to prove that German troops had not simply murdered innocent civilians. The German defense is actually strangely mutually contradictory. What they argue simultaneously is that we have done nothing wrong, um, but when we did, the Belgians had provoked it. And so we didn't uh, mass murder civilians, but if we had, it would be because of front terror warfare, um, illegitimate terrorist activity on the part of Belgian civilians. In Arscott, the German military police commander who had ordered the executions did not personally see any armed Belgian civilians. But he still tried to imply that there had been an uprising. The shots may have been fired from eight to ten rifles, and I gained the impression from the exactness with which the volley was fired that the attack was well organized and perhaps led by some military person. In fact, the German commander's death now seems to have been caused by his own trigger-happy troops, a classic case of friendly fire. But the massacre in the town was just a foretaste of an even greater atrocity. Four days after Arscott, the German army attacked Dinan on the River Meuse. The events of August the 23rd, 1914, still haunt the Belgian nation. The river and steep banks at Dinan formed a natural defensive position. A single French regiment had blown up the bridges and secured the left bank. When the entire German Third Army attacked the town, they came under heavy fire from the French positions. But once again, the Germans blame civilian resistance rather than the French army for their casualties. When the Germans arrived, Angel Manteau was nearly four years old. They shouted, get out, at us. The women had to get into line and join a group on the left that made its way into town. So we set off. I was a very, very heavy child, and my mother could not carry me the whole time. Normally, when you have a crowd like that, one hears a lot of noise, but people were so scared that even the babies kept quiet in their mother's arms. The women and children were taken towards the town's prison on the Place d'Armes. 
Angèle is one of the few surviving witnesses of the massacre of civilians here. To her, the execution of 137 men seemed to go on forever. Nous entendions surtout le bruit des fusils. Above all, we heard the noise of rifles very close to us. And then, in the midst of all this noise, this uproar, an officer galloped up on a horse. He cried an order, and suddenly there was complete silence. I can hear that silence, even now. Once again, German soldiers testified to military investigators that their actions had been justified by civilian resistance. Those people who were caught with weapons in their hands were lined up against a garden wall near the open space. I do not know exactly how many were shot. It may have been 50, it may have been 100. In fact, in Dinan, the Germans were now simply taking revenge on the civilian population. Towards evening, they were again shot at from the opposite bank by French soldiers. The echoes may have made the Germans imagine they were under attack from all sides. Their response was savage. They took reprisals against the innocent. Among their victims were 38 women and girls. Troops also murdered seven babies, including a three-week-old who was bayoneted. Even the most extreme atrocity stories are sometimes based on real events. Like Arscott, Dinan was set on fire and the town was razed. In total, 674 civilians were killed, one-tenth of the population. It was the worst single massacre of civilians by the German army during the war. Every 23rd of August, I feel nervous and frightened, even after so many years. Things like that scar you. New research has confirmed that the German army killed some 6,500 French and Belgian civilians during the first month of the war. There is overwhelming evidence that large segments of the German army behaved in what can only be described as a criminal fashion. Massive destruction of civilian property, um, brutality towards the civilian population, and murder. And so there is definitely a crime going on here. The atrocity story that symbolized the brutality of the German army in 1915 was the crucified soldier. Fresh evidence means it is now possible to resolve that mystery.